Hey everybody, in this lesson we're continuing on chapter 32.3, this is page 22.3 on Schelmerdine's uh, introduction to Greek, and we're talking about the middle passive forms of consonant stem verbs. So these are verbs that end in one of these, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consonants. These are the consonants that you're going to be seeing verbs ending in. And then we have the personal endings for these verbs, which we've already seen. My, psi, tie, and then in the plural, metha, th, and then lastly, uh, what used to be ontai, but we're see, we'll see that this gets a little bit complicated as we move on. So my, psi, tie, metha, th, and untai. So what we're looking at here are m's, sigmas, taws, and then here the theta. Of course there's a sigma before that, but the theta is also going to play, uh, I guess I should be writing this really not just as a um, theta, but a sigma theta that's going to be playing up, and that's different from just a sigma. Um, so then why did I and why did Shelmerdine draw these big charts with these separated consonants? Well, because each of these falls into a category. These are what we call labials because they deal with the lips from the Latin. These are going to be our dentals because they deal with the teeth, again, from the Latin, and that's why you go to a dentist. Uh, and then these are the gutturals dealing with the back of the throat. And then why do we have three of each, and why are they arranged in this order? Well, with all of these, the difference between... So we're going to have the first row, which is unvoiced and unaspirated. So that's, that's vanilla. It's not uh, really anything. And this is what we do with our uh, lips. We put them together. If you put them together and we were to blow through them... Uh, you'd get a P sound, but if you add a little bit of vocal cords in that, buh, you get a combined P with voice. So these are unvoiced, unaspirated, the top, the P, the beta, or the B, is going to be voiced, but still unaspirated. And then these bottom rows in each of the kind of, uh, separate charts, I guess, um, is going to be unvoiced, at least in its kind of default form, but then aspirated. And you can check that out. All of these things in their Roman you know, writings, we have P and B, those things are separate, but I mean, note how they're also written somewhat similarly, but then F, and T, D, and then Th, and Kappa, Gamma, and Kappa, H, or sometimes CH, but that's the hard C right? Uh, it's, it's not a weak C. Uh, so this is what we're, we've got. We've got labials, dentals, and gutturals all separated and then further separated by their voiced or vo unvoiced, unaspirated, voiced but still unaspirated, and then unvoiced, aspirated at the end. That's the chart that we're making. And now we've got to see how are these guys going to play with these personal ending consonants that we're going to see. Mu, sigma, ta, and sigma theta. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of math. So all these together though, the nice thing that you should be able to kind of learn from this is that whether they're voiced or unvoiced or aspirated, they're all going to add in the kind of Greek math together the same. And here we're going to get a double mu. So any of these things preceding a mu, the mu takes over, uh, but the, there's still co kind of some consonantal um, momentum here, so we, it's not just one mu, but a, actually a double mu. Here, we add up psi, and you can guess what's happened because we've already seen this before. We're going to get up psi, right? Here, adding the ta, we've seen P and T can survive together, but what have we ever seen these two before T? Uh, I don't think so, or if so, very rarely. We're going to get a pi ta, or P ta. Uh, and then finally here, plus sigma theta, we're going to see the sigma actually gets eaten here, and we're going to have a phi or phi theta. So these are the, the forms that we're going to be get, getting created as we stick these personal endings 
onto perfect forms that have consonant stems. So then we can do the same thing with dental. We're adding this to a mu. What's going to happen? Well, this is a little bit of a surprise. All of these dentals are going to turn into this sibilant, the S, before the M. So we're going to get sm. We didn't see that one coming, did you? But we're going to see now, well, that's going to be a little bit more predictable. Here, these will become also sigma. And here, the sigma takes over. We end up losing uh, the extra consonant. Here, if we add a sigma, and note, even here, the sigma, or sorry, the ta, we're adding a ta, we just added a sigma. Here, you would expect, well, maybe those TTs could survive. No, what we're actually going to get is a sigma ta. So these things will become sibilants before the another dental. These things are, you, are not really predictable. Uh, linguistics uh, majors and linguistic uh, the study of linguistics will tell you that these things are following laws. But if you don't know the laws, it sure looks random, and it, and it certainly will be random. And then here, uh, the sigma theta rules. Uh, it takes over. So we just have a sigma theta still. Lastly, we can take these gutturals plus mu, and we're going to keep that guttural sound before it. So igmu. Uh, this is a hard sound to make, but it depends on, you know, when you have vowels and consonant, vowels before and vowels after, it's much easier. Here again, somewhat predictable because we've seen gutturals combined with a sibilant before, and we get our xi. Here, kappa, gamma, chi, plus ta, we're going to get the unvoiced ruling. And note that that's what's been happening all along before ta. We're getting the top one in the chart, right? That's what is playing out, except for here where the sigma takes over. Um, and then lastly, when we're adding sigma theta, we're going to end up with a chi theta, which is exactly what we had up here. Uh, so there, there's some method to the madness. It's a pain to learn these charts. Um, the good news is that when you're going from Greek, Greek to English, a lot of these things, if you just learn to recognize it, it won't pose any problems. You say, oh yeah, something must have gotten eaten in there. It's a lot harder to go the other way around and to know, well, I need to add the psi ending on top of, to a, of, a, you know, of a chi, what, are, what am I going to do there? What's going to rule? And that's the, the thing is you need to go to this page and you need to go find how this is going to come together and be able to choose your right consonant. So let's try that again. We had a chi plus a psi. Let's do a, a gamma plus a metha. Well, what would we have there? Well, that we'd look for our gamma and our gutturals and we'd see it here plus mu. And then, okay, so it's just going to be a gamma mu. That was pretty easy. Uh, if we had a, um, you know, any of these things, a tie, you know, a ta uh, plus a tie, you would think, well, it would just be easy to make that a double ta, but that's not at all what happens. You'd have to go here plus ta and see that actually be, would become sigma ta. Uh, so we would erase this and come back with our proper ending. All of that's very difficult to do. That's why Schomburgian has printed this chart. Again, that chart is on page 223 to help make these things a little bit clearer. Um, one thing that Schomburgian points out somewhat disingenuously is that these stops that we have uh, become voiced, unvoiced, or aspirated to match the following consonant. So it's, it's the thing that's added second that rules. And we've seen that, you know, that's why... Um, We've gone unvoiced here because the ta itself is unvoiced. Um, and they give you the example of practical versus pragmatic. So, and Shalmarni says, ah, C English does the same thing too. A C before a T, but versus a, a which, so really that C is a kappa, right? Versus a gamma before something that's voiced. So, so this is the distinction we're getting pragmatic versus practical. Well, that's all true, and English does do this in other situations, but these are Greek verbs, or Greek words. This is exactly where we're getting it. This chart created these formations in ancient Greek, and we borrowed those words to make English. All right, so the last thing uh, that I'm going to start a new lesson to explain this, but note that we had mu, sigma, 
tau and sigma theta, we did not capture this nu. Uh, and note here, it's not even one consonant, but a double consonant, nu, tau, and one of these consonants, the, the sigma is kind of weak, and you can see from what's happening over here, the sigma is really interacting with these words, or the, the kind of consonants before, and then the theta is standing on just as its own. This same thing would not be happening with umtai. And just imagine a B, you know, a B N T, a D N T. These things are hard to do in Greek. And we're going to see how Greek language deals with this, how it makes their third person plural, because that's you know, right where first, second, third, singular, plural endings here. How does it handle third person plural in the middle passive perfect? We'll get to that in the next lesson. See you then.